Good evening, and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Gian, and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Another homicide on St. Thomas. Prisoners come back home, and it's the final curtain call for a retired police officer in the Virgin Islands. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. top story tonight we start our broadcast with a much too familiar story another homicide took place on st thomas with many residents already threatening to leave the territory because of the violence this news just doesn't get any better news channel 8's lee carl has more this is the area where bashim ford was gunned down 19 years old believed to be involved in the shooting death of officer ariel fred it's a complicated case involving a judge an attorney and uh, of course uh, the off-duty police officer and uh, the half-brother of Bashim Ford. Investigation is still underway and here, here are some of the details of this very complicated case. The teen who was scheduled to stand trial with his brother later this year on charges they killed VI police officer Ariel Fred was gunned down early Sunday in the downtown area near the Market Square. Emergency dispatchers there I found the victim dressed in black shirt, blue jeans, shot in the upper body, lying face down the roadway in the square's west uh, side. The dead man later identified as Bashin Ford, 19. Major crime investigators didn't release too much more information. However, as you know, Ford and Jermaine Paris, his half-brother, were scheduled to go on trial in November on charges they killed Fred in the hospital ground area. Uh, this is the area they're talking about. Uh, when another police officer who reported they stopped to intervene saw Fred under attack, Ford then spent a week in the hospital before he was arrested. A judge later ruled he'd be stand trial as an adult. Fred was off duty when the deadly confrontation broke out a block from the Lionel Roberts Stadium. Witnesses told police they saw Ford running backwards down Prince and Gotti, firing shots at Fred, who was chasing him with a stick. Witnesses also said Paris came out of the alley, instructed his brother to leave. Fred then struck Paris over the head with a stick. Paris and Fred rolled on the ground several minutes. Another officer, a rookie on the force, told investigators he heard shots and came to the aid of the fellow officer and saw a group of people attacking Fred at Berjigada. Now, during the attack on the officer, Ford shot Fred several times, allegedly, while standing above him with his drum drawn. With the gun drawn, Clark uh, got out of the car, chased Ford down, and he opened fire on the boy when he refused to surrender. Clark reported he heard more gunshots, secured the area on Goat Street. When the boy collapsed, he ran back and saw Paris with a gun standing alone near Fred's body. The officer ordered Paris to drop the gun, and uh, instead Paris leveled the weapon, forcing Clark to run over uh, to cover, run for cover behind the Vitran bus. Found uh, Park police found Clark was justified in shooting at Ford following an internal investigation. So Paris surrendered three days later. Both Ford and Paris had pleaded not guilty in Fred's murder on condition of a pretrial release. And as you know, there was that complicated situation with Judge Leon Kendall. The other part of the case centered around Judge Leon Kendall claiming that the attorney for the prosecution had made a plea bargain arrangement, uh, but the attorney, Jesse Bethel, said, no, no, it was, um, it was a misspoken statement, and apparently uh, he held it, and apparently that was taken to Supreme of Courts, Third Circuit, and they ruled against Kendall. He later recused himself in the case, which complicated the over matter, the overall matter, and that was why Bashim Ford and Paris now were getting a retrial and that retrial would deal directly with the killing of Officer Ariel Fred. So as I said, a very complicated case here, and interestingly enough, the word was that Bashim Ford and Paris were on what they call house arrest, and the wonder was, what were they doing out at that time in this general area? St. Thomas, near Market Square, on Main Street, Lee Carl, 
for News Channel 8. Thanks, Lee Carl. And now we take a look at the crime situation on St. Croix. Here's News Channel 8's Wes Small with more information. Thanks a lot, Jerome. Let's take a look at our crime blotter. Let's start with early Sunday morning. All right, and here we are in the State Pleasant, and we believe somewhere in this area, um, a young man suffered at least four gunshot wounds uh, to the left side of his body, to his arm, his left armpit, and also his chest area. Here's what we believe happened. It was a birthday party for this woman's daughter at around 1.47 in the morning when they heard shots, apparently. Someone came up to the party and they said that someone had just been shot. Um, as emergency responders got to the scene, they got a young man who was suffering from gunshot wounds, again, hit at least four times to the left side of his body. If you know anything about this situation, you need to call 911. 712-6077, 712-6037, or you can always call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. Let's move on to Lorraine Village, and here's what happened on Friday night, late Friday night. We have four young men who were all charged around um, midnight with possession of an unlicensed firearm. They were charged, they were initially stopped with speeding. They're being held on $25,000 bail, a semi-automatic handgun was found in their possession. Four males were arrested following a traffic stop on Melvin Evans Highway in the vicinity of Estate Paradise on August 8th and charged with unauthorized possession of a firearm. Police stopped the vehicle because it was exceeding the speed limit. Officers then observed marijuana in plain sight and asked the driver if they could inspect the vehicle. After being allowed to search the vehicle, police found a semi-automatic handgun loaded with eight rounds of ammunition in the vehicle. Arrested were 30-year-old Ferris L. Knight, 25-year-old Kareem Ambrose, also known as Deuce, and 24-year-old Craig Cambrin, all of Lorraine Village, and 29-year-old Hanif Watley of Estate Wim. The suspects were all placed on $25,000 bail and remanded to the custody of the Golden Grove Adult Correctional Facility pending their advice of rights hearing. There you have it, four men, again, their ages going from 20 to 30, all charged uh, with unlicensed firearm, and they are now being held at Golden Grove, $25,000 bail. That's a look at your crime blotter. I'm in Mount Pleasant, West Small, for News Channel 8.